Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, videocopilot.net, and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating this meteor scene, and uh, we're going to be compositing in After Effects, modeling in 3D Max, match moving in Buju, and uh, we're going to basically understand the whole workflow from start to finish. So this is a pretty involved uh, tutorial series, but uh, hopefully it'll give you a good idea on how this works from start to finish. Now I know there might be a few people out there a bit reluctant to get into 3D animation, and that's okay. I know we love After Effects, and uh, you know, of course, we want to get more out of it. And in order to do that, we need to integrate it with 3D animation. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be the one creating the 3D animation. You just have to know how to integrate it. I've created a chart here of an average size studio. It's called Fictional Studio. So we have a 3D animation area. So that's where the artists are. They create all the 3D elements. They upload them onto the server. After Effects compositors, they download them and they integrate them in the scene. So even if you're not doing the 3D animation, it's very important to understand the process so that if you ever get a job at one of these fictional studios, you'll uh, know what you're doing and then you won't be getting a fictional paycheck, um, you know, which is important. But I gotta tell you, there are definitely perks when you work at a studio. Um, the lobby um, is always nice. Um, coffee, the coffee room, let me tell you about that. You don't have to just drink coffee there. You can actually have uh, you know, coffee flavored ice cream, coffee flavored soda. I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty open minded there. So anyway, so what I'm gonna be showing you is how to model this whole and then how to add extra elements in After Effects. So in After Effects, we're gonna be adding all the smoke and some extra layers of uh, debris and texture. And the reason we're doing it in After Effects is because we have more real time control over how it looks and we can really fine tune it to get it looking really nice. Now the first thing we need to do is what's called match moving and sometimes referred to as 3D tracking. And what we're gonna do is take our raw footage. Now the first thing we need to do is export our shot so we can do our 3D tracking. The key to this is being able to match our 3D camera to our live action camera so things like our crater will look like they're actually part of the scene. Now 3D tracking is a very powerful technique that can be used for all sorts of things, not just you know creating a meteor crater. I mean you can also create like a crater from an explosion or maybe a hole from a robot that lives under the surface of the earth and then breaks out to destroy the planet, um, you know, all, all sorts of things. So anyway, what we're gonna go ahead and do is export this shot into a JPEG sequence. So we'll choose add to render queue, make sure it's set to best. And then for the lossless mode, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna change it to JPEG sequence and make sure we set that to at least 10 or so. And we hit okay and okay and then just change the output to and choose render. Okay, now we're gonna be doing our match moving or our camera solving for that 3D camera. I'm in a program called Buju, and it's a great program. The guys at 2d3.com were very nice enough to loan me a license uh, for these tutorials. And admittedly, at the studios I worked at, this is the program they had, and you know, it's a great program. Of course, there are plenty of other alternatives out there. You don't have to necessarily drop $10,000, but certainly it's nice to know the program that you might be running into if you get some jobs out there at uh, various studios. Now, the principles of 3D tracking are the same. So although the steps may not translate perfectly, the principles are very, very similar, and I'll make sure to uh, keep it generic so you can uh, understand how it's all working. Now. Looks like there's a lot going on here. We got buttons and all this crazy stuff, but really it's a very simple program. And what we're gonna do is import our image sequence. Now I've navigated to that JPEG sequence we just exported, and I'm gonna choose open. And it's gonna start from zero to 171 and choose okay. So here we have the timeline and we can scrub through our 170 frames and play it back with our controls, all that good stuff. What we could do right now is click track features and it would automatically track the whole scene. Now, we're gonna go ahead and do a few manual steps because not every shot 
that you work with is going to be as easy to work with as this shot. Now it's important to have good track markers. We put some cards out there to give us a good ground plane. And uh, the more markers you can add, the better. But of course, uh, you know, some scenes you're going to have to paint them out. So, you know, you're going to have to figure out the balance between accuracy and, uh, you know, extra work. So now what we're going to do for the sake of good practice is we're going to mask out our moving character. If we calculate our character in the scene, it's going to throw our solve off and the camera isn't going to work right. Of course, Buju is actually pretty good at canceling out objects that aren't stationary it's always better just to mask them out. So there's an add polygon mask. And then we just draw a shape around our moving object, in this case, Tino. And we're going to move forward, and it automatically keyframes. So just, uh, you know, move the mask around. You can adjust the points. And you can also rotate or scale it. So we'll just uh, move it along here. And uh, going through... So that should work pretty good. And now what's going to happen is when we analyze our footage, it's going to ignore this area, and that's what we want. So next step, we're going to do track features. So this is 2D tracking. This is going to calculate all these little points all over the scene. Click Track Features. All frames and start. We're going to see all these uh, little points coming up, and they're going to be showing you sort of the movement of those track points and uh, it's good to see a lot of them um, staying on the screen longer that means uh, you know it's able to follow what's going on in the shot and remember this is automatic tracking so we can of course do sort of manual tracking but uh, this should get the job done okay so now that that's done we have all our little track points now on the shot you're working on if you have any problem tracks or things that don't look correct what you can do is select them and just click delete and those won't be considered when it actually solves for the 3D camera. A little bit of understanding of what's happening here is those are 2D points and what Buju is going to do is use a really complex algorithm and figure out where the camera is in order to make all of these points be where they are. You don't have to understand what it's doing but the bottom line is it's going to figure out a camera. So what we're going to do is click camera solve all frames and choose start. Okay, so now that that's done, we have our 3D points calculated. So we can click on 3D here. And if you hold down shift and right click, you can zoom out and orbit around with left click. And so these are our points. Here's our camera. And those points basically, if this were like a landscape, those points represent the landscape that we just tracked. So if we go back to the 2D view, you can see where those points are in uh, relationship. Okay, now what we need to do is tell the program how the scene is set up. It needs to know that these points represent the ground and that way it can figure out a correct ground plane so that we can put things on the surface of the street later on in 3D. So what we want to do is go into 3D tasks and choose add edit scene geometry. And this is very similar in other programs. You basically have to tell Buju that this is our ground and this is X and this is Y so that it knows how to export the data so it looks correct in your other programs. Now, there's two little reflectors in the scene. There's one here and there's one here. And they're perfectly running along the X axis. So what I'm going to do is select it, hold down Control and select this point. So now I have those two points selected and you can see they're kind of green and you can also draw a box around points but we just want to grab this point, hold control and this point and then we come in here and we choose add coordinate from hint and we connect to the selected and that will allow us to specify what those two points represent and we're going to change the type to X axis. And we can update coordinate, close. If we go into the 3D view now, we can see our scene has changed. Now, it doesn't necessarily look correct, but it has changed from what it was a moment ago. And that's good. We're on the right track. Now, the thing about exporting from Buju into 3D Studio Max is that 3D Studio Max uses an inverted system. 
And what that means is the coordinate system is a little mixed up between the two programs. Now these two points are our x and this point to this point would be our z but in this program we need to switch it so that it looks correct in 3D Studio Max. It may be different for Cinema 4D and some of the other 3D programs out there but you can look in the help file and it'll tell you a um, quick example is in uh, After Effects I have this layer in 3D space and if I move it on the Z axis I'm moving it back if I move it on the X axis I'm moving it side to side and the Y axis up and down so remember these points represent X these points represent Z but we want to switch it so that it looks correct in 3D Max so what I'll do is go back into Edit Scene Geometry and we're going to add coordinate from Hint and we're going to go ahead and select this point hold down control and select this point so along this street line and we're going to choose instead of Z axis which is correct we're going to choose Y axis and we're going to connect to selected and two tracks are now connected and uh, we can also add an origin so like the center of our scene we could just grab a point add coordinate and just choose origin and connect to select it and that'll be the center of your 3D world when you export. Then I'll choose close and by the way you can go into the 3D view and see how crazy it looks but when we bring it into 3D Max it'll look just right. Now what we also want to do is export some of these points for 3D Max as reference points so I'm gonna grab this point maybe this point hold down control this point this point this point maybe one in the middle and right click flag for export and that way when we export it there'll be a little 3D position right at that point and that way we know where our floor plane is exactly and if we put things on top of the surface of the road it'll look like it's stuck there rather than floating or uh, moving around so that's all there is to it it's pretty easy I just wanted to explain everything to you of course uh, there's manual tracking and uh, you can add target tracks and what that allows you to do is track things that you know are correct and that way Bougie will consider that when it calculates so what you tell it is correct is going to be a lot more meaningful than just its automatic tracking hoping that those points are actually meaningful so keep that in mind okay so now we want to export this camera data but first we need to make sure our sequence is set to the correct frame rate so we go to edit camera and make sure your frame rate is correct because when we export the cameras we want to make sure that that is all in sync with your data so we're going to go ahead and set it directly to 24 frames per second choose OK then we can come up here to export export camera solve so export time we choose export export camera solve and what we're going to go ahead and do is make sure it's set to camera solve one and that the frame range is correct we're gonna export for 3D Studio Max now you can also export for other 3D programs in compositing applications so not just After Effects and 3D Max but Cinema 4D and uh, tons of others so check those out to moving camera stack scene we want to export the flag tracks only if you don't have this checked you're gonna have a zillion little points and you don't want that also you may want to consider the scale scene by factor and that's going to enlarge the area of the points so that you're not working in a really small area so for 3D Max we'll set it to hundred and we'll choose save now if we're going to export for After Effects we want to go ahead and change it to After Effects but After Effects uses a standard coordinate system so we want to switch back so for After Effects we'll go into the add edit scene geometry and for the Y axis remember that was the point from here to here we'll go ahead and set that correctly to Z and update and close then when we export for After Effects we will get a correct scene file out of that okay now that we've exported that camera data we're going to import it into our host application first we'll take the crater scene MA file that's a Maya camera file drop it into our project one composition has a pre-comp that says square crater and the square crater has our null objects what I'll do is grab our camera footage drop it in there and just give you a quick uh, demonstration of how this is going to work I'll take the text tool I'll type uh, just a quick text there we'll turn it into a 3d layer and it's all the way over here now 
We'll take one of the null objects, hit P, copy the position, and paste it into the position of the text object. So now the text is in the same position as that null object. So if I scrub through, you can see it's somewhat on the ground plane. Now, it gets a little tricky um, when dealing with this composition, but I'll cover that in the next set of tutorials. I just want to kind of give you a little bit of information so you can actually get going with this. Of course, if you check out the 3D text tutorial, you can probably do something like this, where you have 3D text with shadows in your scene, and of course, you can animate it and do all sorts of things. Now. Now, in 3D Max, what we have is our Crater Scene Max script file. And we drop that into a perspective view, and it creates a bunch of points and a camera. So if we right click, choose Camera 1, here is that camera scene where now we have these points as our floor plane. And we could go and go to the viewport background and set that image sequence as our background image. Then we could start adding objects into the scene, uh, like a box or a text or anything like that, and those objects will look like they're actually in our scene. Now I'm going to get obviously um, more detailed when we get into that side of the tutorial, but this should get you going as far as understanding how they can integrate. And uh, in the previous tutorial, you learned how to render 3D elements out, and you could then add shadows and comp it into that scene um, just like before. So anyway, to get into the more advanced stuff, uh, just uh, be sure to check out part two and part three of the Crater tutorial series. I'm Andrew Kramer, and we'll see you next time.